So can you write the acceptance criteria if you don't have all the details? Can you? Welcome everyone. We are talking today about writing the acceptance criteria when you have you don't have all the details. You don't have all of it. You don't know what's supposed to be done. How you do that? And so this topic is going to be very important for my existing BAs, the BAs that are already out there working in the field. It may be a little bit too much for you new BAs, but I'll still hope that you listen to the end as well. And before I get into the topic of today, I want to say a big shout out to all the people that's been going to my website and filling out that waiting list, y'all. Y'all filling out the waiting list, the whole thing. I'm like, woo, look at all these people coming into my waiting list. I love it. Come on, the rest of you who have not joined the waiting list yet, please go join it. I'm still working on the course, y'all. I'm telling you, it's not as easy as I thought it would be. Yeah, so I'm still working on that, but it's coming out. It's going to be good. You're going to love it. You are going to love it, I swear. You know, when I bring something out, it's going to be quality, and you're going to love it, especially for your new BAs. It's going to be awesome. And don't forget to go check out my website with my free courses in the meantime. And there you can find everything from Agile to Business Analyst Questions. I'm going to be putting up a new course as well on some of these questions I've been answering around Agile. I want to put those together for you as well. So it's going to be great. Go to carolise.com, um, go to free courses, and just look at what's there and just watch them back to back to back so that you can get the full teaching of what I'm trying to share with you here as opposed to being on YouTube trying to jump around figure out which video to watch next. <laughs> you know, I've already done the work for you and made it easy for you, so go find it, okay, and do it. So that's there. And also I want to say for the people who have sent me emails, I have not responded to a lot of you. Don't throw me away, guys. Don't throw me away. I got lots of iron in the fire, okay? I can't respond to all the emails. I want to, but I read them, and I know that there's a few people who have complained that on my website, when they go to download my templates, that some of those templates are not downloading. Give me until tomorrow. Today is February 2nd. Um, after that, you should be able to go there and get it out. I'll, I'll just see what the problem is and fix it myself. I can do that, so... Uh, give me a couple hours and then you can try again. And I have the template for the business requirements document. I have templates for your resume. I have templates for a uh, um, cheat sheet. I have a roadmap template. So there's stuff up there that you can use for your presentations and for your resume and for your documentation. And I want you to get those because I made them for you. Okay, I made them for you, so I want you to be able to download them. So I'm going to go check and see what's going on, why it's not downloading, and that will help you guys. So you can come back and check very very shortly okay so thank you guys for sending me those emails i really do appreciate them i see them in my inbox and i'm like wow i feel so loved oh my god <laughs> and i see y'all subscribing too i see y'all subscribing and pushing up that views too i like it i love it so okay today we're talking about the agile process again we're still on agile i'm, I'm in this agile vibe right now i'm just gonna bang out all the questions I get so I don't get a chance to respond to some of the emails but I make a video as a response right so it can help multiple people not just one person so the question is can you write the acceptance criteria if you don't have all the details and this is for people who are genuine like genuinely you you just don't have the information there's no way for you to get it from you don't have the resources you don't have access to the resources and you just don't know but it has to be done it's an almost impossible situation i'm not talking about people who are just like you know lackadaisical and they just fling a story up there last minute and just push it into the backlog and then the product owner is like what is this you're like yeah i just didn't get a chance to finish all the details like i'm not talking to those people Right? I don't deal with those people. <laughs> I don't have any of my followers that are like that, okay? <laughs> We're not into that. We're doing things of high quality, okay? So you are genuinely unable to get this information. I'll give an example of what this could look like. Let's say that you want to do an integration with some third-party um, software. Maybe it's a requirement from your clients. Maybe your client needs to be able to connect to some third-party. But there is something in how your 
I don't know, your API works or something that makes it a little bit of a challenge. And you know the problem, you just don't know what the acceptance criteria should say to solve the problem. And let's say this happens and you go out and you talk to your development team, you talk to your support team, you talk to your account managers for the client, and the, from the business side, they wanna get this solved so they could implement this client. From the technical team side, they're like, we don't know what the third party does because we are not the third party. We don't have any control over what the third party is going to give us. And then you try to get to the third party and they give you documentation that you don't really readily understand. Okay. But you want to get the ball rolling and you want to make sure this doesn't just fall through the cracks. And so what do you do? You know, this is there's a deadline on it. You need to implement this client. If this doesn't get through, maybe the client won't be able to, to you know, to pay us, or your company might lose the client, and you really don't want that to happen. So you're like between a rock and a hard place. Right? What do you do? Other examples of this could be there is something that you know that you need to provide in your software, but you don't know how to implement it the best way. Right? It maybe doesn't have to be with a third party. It's within the software that you are in control of. But what is the best implementation? Maybe there's two ways to skin the cat. And one way might be faster, but may have some more disadvantages and the other way might not be. And these are technical implementations. So you could say, leave that up to dev. Why do you have to worry about that? But depending on what they implement, it could affect how the business is the result of the business. So you kind of have to be involved. So now you're like, I don't know. They don't know. I don't have the people who can tell me. Nobody knows. So what am I supposed to do here? <laughs> and that happens. That happens, people. That happens to the best of us. It happens to the most experienced of us. It happens to even people who are seasoned, like being at a company for 20 years. And because we're in technology, technology changes and things change and you have to adapt to change. So don't feel like this is a case of incompetence or um, go find out because the information has to be there or cancel the project because you don't have the information. You sometimes you don't have the ability to cancel. Like you're way too far down the road. You've already spent money invested in this. You have to do it. So the best thing to do when those things happen is to kind of also get consensus. So to have a meeting with the different people who are involved, different stakeholders, maybe it's your product team, your project team, um, development team, QA, whatever, you get a meeting with everybody and you let them know this is the situation that we're faced with. How can we brainstorm a solution? And this may have been something that you'd already done because by the time you're having this second or third meeting, you would have talked about it already to know that you don't know. Right. So <laughs> it's like they already told you they don't know. So why are you going to meet with them again? But it's just to acknowledge that you are making them know that you don't know either, that nobody has the realm of knowledge in this in this space. So one option that you can do when that happens is you can create what I like to call a research story. So a research story is not to say it's going to be implemented. It's say I'm going to give you something to go research. And it's something a technical team can research. It's more like a proof of concept sometimes, but it's not a whole feature. You wouldn't give like a big feature into one story. No, it's more like I want to do this, this specific thing, and I don't know what is the best approach. So research this approach versus that approach, and then the end result of the ticket is that you can come back with both approaches and say which one is technically more feasible. Right, but at least there's work that needs to be done to do the research, right? So if you don't make it a ticket, it doesn't get prioritized, it doesn't get attention, and then you end up with this la la land, I don't know what to do kind of situation. So one thing to do is to come up with that research story. The other thing that I like to do is sometimes, and this is a caveat, sometimes I will write an actual story and leave some of the implementation up to the, the decision of dev. But I don't do this arbitrarily. I do it only after discussions with dev and they come to agreement that they would know how to implement something until they get into the implementation of it. So this is where you've already agreed it has to be done. The product owner already say that it's gonna be a part of this sprint. So you're not just throwing something over the fence. We all agree we need to do this and we all agree that it has to be done and it's prioritized for this sprint. But what we don't have is the best 
technical way to do it. I just create the story from what I want the business result to be. And I leave the implementation, which I normally do anyway, but there's some things about the implementation that could affect the business result. And I leave that part up to the developers. And then part of the agreement is that they would come back to me with anything that they think might be affecting the end user or, or the, the business problem that they're trying to solve. And we would work it out even during the sprint. Right. So this is like, a, you know, kind of sideways approach, <laughs> but you don't have any other choice. You got to do something. Right? So I give an example of this one. We have an API and it, it always tends to be very technical. If it's a business problem, I already know how to get to the solution. But if it's a technical problem that is coming from just systems and how they operate and nobody really has a solution there, then, you know, that's where we all have to kind of step in and try to solve it. So I give you the example of we have an API and it normally returns this list of values for something, right? And we have a particular customer who's calling our API, but they don't want the list that we return. They want an individual uh, item, one, you know, a specific item, and they want to display that on their dashboard. And they want to call our API, get the specific value, and then they want to display that in an HTML format, not a PDF or anything else. They want to show it in an in a interactive way. Well, we don't do that today. <laughs> we return a list of stuff. And you can parse the list and figure out what you want. But they, the way their system works is so specific that they, are, they need to re return one thing. So there are different approaches to this. You can put something in the middle. You can return. Uh, you, you could ask them to send a different call and then you return something else. I mean, it can get very complicated. But the point is, development team wasn't sure what the best approach was. I certainly don't know what's the best approach for returning stuff from the API. I'm not a developer. And uh, the client didn't know what the best approach is either. So the client is looking to us. We're looking at each other and we're like, uh huh. <laughs> Nobody knows how to do this thing. <laughs> Nobody knows how to do this. <laughs> so, but it has to be done because their whole business is waiting on it. So, you know, we. It's not that they're going to die if we don't do it, but it would be such a great win if we did, you know, and we want to do it. We want to please our clients. We want to make them happy. And so those are the cases where in that case, I wrote a story and the story was to be able to uh, provide this URL that then the client can consume and display in the HTML format that they want. Um, but how they're going to actually implement it, are they going to make a continuous call? It's going to be asynchronous, whatever. I don't know. And they don't know either. <laughs> but as they get into it, they're going to do stuff, test, do stuff, test, and then figure it out along the way. And that's okay. It's okay sometimes to have this level of uncertainty as to even how to implement, but that doesn't stop you from writing the user story and writing the acceptance criteria. You put in this acceptance criteria that you are leaving this section up to the discretion of dev. So you can write stories, but you don't even know uh, exactly how it's going to turn out. It's not a you know best practice by, by any means. And it's not. I'm not saying that you go out there and do this as a norm. I'm saying instead of doing nothing, you do something. And you adapt to change and let the developers sometimes help you figure out what would be the best way to implement this thing. Does that make sense? I hope I'm not communicating the wrong thing to you. I'm not trying to say that you go out there and just write stories and leave developers to figure it out. It's not what I'm saying. I'm saying where you have no source of information. You don't have, let's say you don't have access to the customer, but you need to build something for them. You don't have access to them. You don't have access to even people like them because they're, a you know, strange kind of niche. So you don't do nothing. <laughs> no, you, you, you do research stories and then you do, sometimes you do actual implementable stories, but you leave some of it up to the developers for the part that you cannot answer, right? Not that you don't try or you don't have any impetus to go do it, but it's just outside of your control. So, Anyway, I hope that little talk was helpful. <clears throat> My voice is gone.
oh my god i hope you learned something from this video and uh go check out my other videos go like and subscribe to the video and i will see you guys in the next video see you then take care bye bye